Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya, Terima kasih. Lapan tuh dah lima ratus. Lepor University. Lepor Institut Iwan Taruna. Kau kau pen moderator. Indonesia Association of Agro Industri Teknologi. Insinyur Adi Joko Kuritno, MSEA, PhD. Honorable Dean Faculty of Agriculture Technology University of Jember, Dr. Siswoyo Sukarno, STPM. Honorable keynote speaker from Gifu University Japan, Professor Kei Nakano. Honorable keynote speaker from Kesejat University Thailand, Asu Professor Sri Jai Song Sipong, PhD. Honorable keynote speaker from University of Gajah Mada, Indonesia, Professor Umar Santoso, PhD. Honorable keynote speaker from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Japan, Professor Sishu Tojo, PhD. And honorable all participants and of course all invited guests. First of all, let us praise our God Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the creator and sustainer of the universe. Praise be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger of Allah, who guide human life from distraction into the right way. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's awesome and gracious gem for me to be master of ceremony in this morning on Thursday, 17th of September 2020, in our big event, international webinar, The Agro-Industrial Revolution, New Normal and the Future World. Excellence, ladies and gentlemen, before we start agenda for today, let us pray in accordance with trust respectively. May God make rewarding even for all of us. Let's pray together. Finish. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we enter the core of the show, I will read out the random we are this morning. And our random today is our follow. Number one is the Indonesia National Anthem. Number two, welcome speech, Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology. Number three is welcome speech. Chairman of Indonesia Association of Agro Industry Technology. Number four is opening speech, rector of the Jember University. Number five is international webinar, the Agro Industrial Revolution, New Normal and the Future World. And number six is closing. Ladies and gentlemen, to solve the time, the was event is in the Indonesia National Anthem. The title is Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, let's sing together.
Thank you. Excellence, ladies and gentlemen, the next event is welcome speech, Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Dr. Siswoyo Sukarno, STP, MO. To Mr. Siswoyo Sukarno, time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everybody. The our honorable Rector University of Jember, Dr. Iwan Taruna. Dear our honorable Chairperson of APTA, Dr. Adi Joko Guritno. Dear our honorable keynote speakers, Professor Umar Santuso, Professor Kohi Nagano, Professor Sirisai Son Sempong, Professor Seisu Tuju. And dear program committees, all our colleagues and all participants, ladies and gentlemen, in this virtual meeting, I would like to say welcome to Jember, Indonesia. Welcome to University of Jember. Welcome to Faculty of Agricultural Technology, especially study program of agro-industrial technology. First of all, thanks for the chance to me to give speech in this occasion. We would like to censure our thanks to Almighty God who gave us gathering here in this event of the first online conference on agro-industrial technology. This program event is conducted special for all participants who is concerning on agro-industrial development. Dear honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of this Faculty of Agriculture and Technology, I also would like to sincere our thanks to all, to, to all of the keynote speakers who have spent their time for us here in sharing their experience and knowledge regarding the agro-industrial development for facing the problems experienced in this era of COVID-19 pandemic. Hopefully, this kind of activities would like have much benefit for people and institutions that participate in these programs, as well as I could, it could mutually strengthen the collaboration among us. The ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned in this activity, the programs that is held in this occasion is on the agro-industrial revolution, new normal, and the future of work. Dear ladies and gentlemen, at last, but not the least, I could not forgive the efforts of all committees that have already prepared the program from the beginning until finish. It is therefore, thanks a lot, all of the committees that have prepared and organized the programs very well. Dear Ladies and gentlemen, before I close my speech, I would like to ask our rector for opening this conference officially. Thank you very much for the attention. Good luck for you all. Success for you all. Enjoy the conference. Enjoy your time. Good morning. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Thank you, Mr. Siswoyo Sukarno. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event is welcome speech. Chairman of Indonesia Association of Agro-Industry Technology, Insinyur Adi Joko Guritno, MSI, PhD. To Mr. Adi Joko, time is yours. Oh, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Greeting to all of us. Hopefully, you will be in always good health and current uncertain situation caused by COVID-19. Firstly, I would like to address my thanks to the official of this webinar who gave me time to give a short speech as a representation of Chairman of Indonesian Association Agro-Industrial Profession. I welcome to the first international webinar entitled The Agro-Industrial Revolution, New Normal and Future World, held by University of Jember. Ladies and gentlemen, I congratulate to all of my colleagues from the University of Jember and of course those who I respect and honorable Bapak Rektor Dr. Iwan Taruna, Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture Technology, Dr. Siswoyo Sukarno, and of course, to the speakers who I am proud and will provide many ideas and views about the agriculture industry. Professor Kohei Nakano from Kifu Daigaku University, and also Associate Professor Hirichai Songserm Pom from Kasatsat University, also uh, Professor Seisu Tocu from Tokyo Agriculture University, and my senior in the same faculty, Professor Umar Santoso from Gajah Mada University. I really thank you very much for taking the time and share knowledge, experience, research, so that audience can get a lot of benefits. The development of agriculture industry is very encouraging at this time. It is even proven that the current condition the agriculture sector has not receded in contribution to the national contribution. Even though economic conditions are difficult and receding, but humans still need their consumption. Needs so that the agriculture sector is very important to become one of the main pillars that continues to be developed and maintained. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that activities like this continue to grow as an alternative scientific development, which is currently having difficulties being implemented directly and can still benefit from switching online as it is today. Congratulations again. Happy webinar. May we always be in a blessing of health and safety. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please time back to the moderators. Thank you, Mr. Adi Joko. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event of the University, Dr. Insinyur Iwan Taruna M. To Mr. Iwan Taruna, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, uh, distinguished uh, participants and speakers, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear colleagues. First of all, on behalf of the University of Jember, it is a pleasure and very honor to welcome you all at the present virtual conference that hosted by the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, University of Jember. 
At this moment, I'd like to also congratu uh, congratulate all the committee members for their successful initiation to conduct the two-day online conference that they call it as the first online conference on agro-industrial technology. I was happy this morning because I got noticed that the number uh, of the conference participants nearly 900 people. And they come not only from uh, Indonesia, but also viewing from 11 different countries. I truly really appreciate the organizing committee and the Dean of Faculty of Agricultural Technology, University of Jember, for such achievement and contribution. Thanks, for, uh, thanks so much for that. In order to have great talk about the conference them, entitled Agro-Industrial Revolution, New Normal and the Future Work, some keynote speakers are invited to deliver their important presentation, including Professor Kohei Nakano from Gifu University, Japan, Associate Professor Shirichai Song Shempong from Kansetsa University of Thailand, Professor Seisu Tojo from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Japan, and from our country, uh, there will be Professor Umar Santoso uh, from Gejah Mada University and the chairman of APTA, uh, Dr. Adi Joko Guritno. This conference session will be managed by the moderator uh, from our institution. Uh, he is a Dr. Ida Bagus Ningrat. We fully encourage this conference because it is relevant to the Jember University vision that is packed to be excellent uh, university in terms of technology, art, and science uh, development. But unfortunately, for this year even, is held virtually due to the pandemic situation worldwide. The COVID-19 uh, might have limited us physically but uh, the ongoing spirit to enhance and spread knowledge, research, and ideas goes uh, beyond borders and transgen uh, all restrictions. Ladies and gentlemen, today's conference room seems to discuss about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the agro-industrial sector in Asia-Pacific countries. As we all know that the government worldwide are suffering the downgrade of economic growth due to such situation calling for some particular strategy to overcome this uncommon problem. In view of that, we hope during our discussion in this conference, the speakers will share their expertise and experience on how to tackle uh, such situation in the new normal era, as well as providing any al alternative solution to rebuild uh, such sector so that they can operate and get normal performance nearly as before. All right, I should not talk much, just let's start this conference. But we are particularly pleased that this conference can also accelerate the exchange of ideas and begin or continue any opportunities in collaboration, networks, and also joint research. Don't hesitate to carry out the best ideas. Don't hold back the new fund discoveries. And last but not the least, don't conceal any knowledge that can be beneficial to our surrounding. Beginning with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I officially opened the first online conference on agro-industrial technology. I apologize, unable to continue attending all this conference session due to the conflict with other agenda. Thank you and enjoy the conference. Wa bilahi tawfiq wal hidayah wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Iwan Taruna. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event is on international webinar, The Agro-Industrial Revolution, New Normal and the Future World. Discussion will be guided by Dr. Ida Bagus Suryaningrat, STPMM, as moderator. He is lecturer in the Department of Agricultural Industrial Technology, University of Jember.
to Dr. Ida Bagus Suryaningrat, STPMM, time is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bu Nidia and Bu Linda. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this international webinar or web seminar with the title of The Agri Industrial Revolution, New Normal and the Future. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Ida Bagus Suryaningrat. I'm from the Department of Agri-Industrial Technology, Faculty of Agricultural Technology, University of Jember. In this particular occasion, I would like to serve as your moderator in this seminar. First of all, I would like to thank to all speakers, to all participants, all audience. Thank you for joining this seminar and also thank you for all the head of this university committee who prepare everything before we start uh, the presentation from the speakers i would like to read the sequence of this seminar uh, this seminar would be divided into three sessions uh, session one session two and uh, completion and closing session each session there will be discussion and question session from participants or audiences in session one we have two speakers. They are Professor Uma Santoso, PhD. He is from the Department of Food and Agricultural Product, University of Gajah Mada, Indonesia. And secondly, for Professor Kohei Nakano. He is from the United Graduate School of Agricultural Science, Gifu University, Japan. In session two, we have also two speakers. First, Associate Professor Shiri Chai Songsa Mukong, PhD. He is from Department of Food Science and Technology, Kasesat University, Thailand. And two, uh, we have Professor Seisu Tojo, PhD. He is from Institute of Agriculture, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Japan. Okay, now we are going to session one, and I hope all the speakers already here. And I think all speakers are here. And I would like to invite Professor Omar Santoso. He is from the Department of Food and Agriculture Product, Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. And uh, before the presentation started, I would like to read his CV. This is on this on CV. Uh, Professor Umar's PAD uh, come from the Department of Food. Food and Agriculture Product, Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. He was graduate bachelor degree from UGM, and then he got master degree and PhD from Food Science and Technology from Tokyo University of Agriculture, Japan. And his major is food chemistry with specific research interests are food antioxidant and halal food. And he also concerned to food security and safety issues including traditional food. She was a former director of the Center for Food and Nutrition Studies, or CFNS, UGM, and he is the president of IAFT, or Indonesian Association of Food Technologies. Yeah, IAFT, okay. He also an halal auditor of AIFDC, ICU. He has active involved in scientific forum. Uh, some books has been written and many articles have been published in scientific journals. Okay, that's a uh, short CV of Professor Umar. Professor Umar, I would like to invite you. Are you ready for presenting the paper? Professor Umar, uh, you have 20 minutes presentation. Now, Professor Matt, time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Bagus. Uh, uh, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable Rector of University of Kajang of Jember, uh, Jember, Dr. Iwan Daruna. Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Jember, Dr. Siswoyo uh, Sukarno, uh, 
chairman or president of APTA, Dr. Adi Joko Kuritno. He is my one of my best colleagues in Gajah Mada University. Honorable speakers, Professor Kohei Nakano from Gifu University. Professor Siri Chai from Kasistad University. Uh, Professor Seisi Tojo. Um, so all of the audience, uh, of course, the committee uh, and all participants uh, of this conference. First of all, I would like to thank the, the committee of University of Jember for the opportunity given to me to be here for sharing uh, idea or talk or uh, experience. Uh, for this uh, conference. Please, uh, the next uh, the slide, please. Oh, I have to, sorry. Uh, share file. Oh, sorry. I. Hello. Uh, okay. Okay. It's okay. okay my slide. Yeah, it is. It's. Uh, it's starting to screen sharing. Uh, yeah, screen sharing. No. Yeah, not, not yet. Success. Come up. Screen Come up now. Come up. Oh, okay. Okay. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In this opportunity, thank you, Dr. Bagus. My uh, title just uh, simply agro industrial product innovation to enhance the. Uh, Competitiveness of local food. Yeah, I am from Kajamadan University, and also as stated before, mentioned before, I am uh, from uh, Pati or IIT. Yeah. Before continuing to the the content of the uh, the main content of my presentation, may I bring my uh, greeting from Pati? Yeah. Just at glance. PATPI or IFT, Indonesian Association of Food Technologies, as a slogan or mission, strengthening food science and technology in Indonesia for prosperity and welfare of all. Yeah, IFT or PATPI is a professional organization in the field of food science and technology in Indonesia. It is a member of Flipstar. Federation of the Institute of Food Science and Technology in ASEAN. There, is, there are 10 countries in ASEAN region. And PATI is also an adhering body or member of IUPOS, International Union of Food Science and Technology. There are about 70 adhering body of IUPOS. Yeah. So the program, uh, yeah, uh, like a uh, professional organization as common, Standard of developing standard of education of curriculum, food science and technology, publication, uh, journal, scientific forum like this uh, conference, yeah, which is development, collaboration, professional some, uh, services, book writing, and so on. This is the program. Yeah, at the end, our organization is as follows. Yeah, now the trust on me, Omar Sandosa, and uh, the vice. Uh, President One, uh, Organizational Affairs and National Collaboration, Prof. Yasmi, Vice President Two, Research Development Scientific Forum International Collaboration. This is uh, Prof. Julie Witono, uh, I think it's from uh, this faculty. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, third, Vice President Third, is Education Development, Student Fostering, Journal Publication Development. This is uh, Dr. Ferry and the Fourth is professional services, book writing, and so on. This Prof. Meta and uh, general secretary, Dr. Tiansa, and treasurer, Dr. Dewey. This at a glance, uh, our organizations. Yeah, last year, 1920, uh, 2019, we have a uh, ASEAN Food Conference. I think uh, uh, maybe you uh, know about this, yeah, last year. And 
The next AFG, AFG Asian Food Council will be in Malaysia in October 2021 next year. There is a, there will be a AFG Asian Food Conference. Yeah. Okay, and that's just a clear about our organization. Now uh, let's come to the topic: mm -hmm. yeah, agro industrial product innovation to enhance to enhance or to strengthen the competitiveness of local foods. It is just uh, simply I read from the textbook, for example, from literature. Agro industry as industry based on processing and of agricultural raw materials uh, is an enterprise that processes agricultural raw materials, including ground and tree crop, as well as livestock. Agro industry offers a means of increasing the domestic added value of raw materials through manufacture. Here in the presentation, I mean that agricultural product material is food, yeah, because the most agricultural product uh, mostly used as food, yeah. So agricultural product innovation uh, so, so, uh, can be uh, the same uh, food innovation. Yeah. Talking about innovation, there are two targets uh, of food innovation for strengthening for providing food security and uh, in the uh, business aspect for increased added value of the raw material, agricultural product material. Yeah, so this is very important. Agricultural product innovation is very important because there's a uh, component or uh, 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 some uh, for to target food security and for business aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I think food security, I told, we yeah, know that uh, there are challenges for global food security. Challenges for food security, there are six, the main challenges. The first is uh, increasing food production to meet the demand of growing population. How to increase food production to meet the demand of growing population. Uh, the second is changing diets that in uh, consequence with non-communicable diseases uh, increased. The third, climate changes, support growing scarcity of fresh water resources, the fertile degradation of and loss of fertile land, and the sixth, high food loss and food waste. It is uh, the, the high challenges, uh, high food challenges. I think, yeah. And maybe the seven will be added by natural disaster or a terrible outbreak like this pandemic COVID-19 that is that was unpredictable. Uh, according to the World Food Program, before COVID pandemic, there was 135 million people in the world suffer from acute hunger. Yeah, but after COVID pandemic entering, uh, so additional uh, uh, 130 million people at risk of suffering acute hunger. So double, approximately double the, the total of. Uh, people suffering acute hunger. It is a, a challenge, our pro pro problem. Yeah, yeah. We remembering, very remembering this uh, SDGs. We focus on zero hunger. SDG number two, three targets. The, there are three, three targets: end hunger, achieve food security and improved nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. Agriculture. Promote a sustainable agriculture. It is a just we 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 try to uh, remember to outline what is the problem about food or is food issues in the world uh, presently. Yeah, again that global global food need or demand is very high, very huge. Yeah, because the population and now is very high. In this year, 2.8 billion people in the world. 2.8 billion of more, yeah, just a uh, more detail. 2.8 uh, uh, billion of people in the world, and in 2030 will be 8.5 billion, and 2050 it is uh, predicted to be 9.7 billion in the population in the world. So it's very uh, high challenge, and uh, need. Uh, uh, global food demand will be 70% higher from now. 
70 percent higher from now. Yeah, it's very heavy challenge. Yeah, we know. How about Indonesia? Indonesia is uh, the greatest number four of population. Yeah, uh, in the world after China, India, United States. Uh, yeah, it's number four. It's very high population. Yeah. So the current population in Indonesia is uh, about 274 million million in Indonesia now. Uh, in this, uh, yeah, just two days ago I uh, took this uh, data to uh, 274 in this. Uh, so again, this very uh, high challenge uh, because. In 1950, uh, will be yeah, it's predicted to be 318 million the Indonesian population. It is very important to meet the full demand. Yeah, Indonesia. Yeah, and the issues that there might be uh, many. And we now we are now uh, uh, thinking how about these uh, challenges? Yeah, are we uh, pessimistic <laughs> or worry? Yeah, of course worry, but not pessimistic. I think it is. Uh, necessary. It is uh, better to be optimistic. Why? Because uh, Indonesia is blessed, uh, yeah, blessed, yeah, by uh, mega biodiversity. Yeah, we are Indonesia in uh, the tropical area. We have uh, mega biodiversity. Even the greatest number three after Brazil and Colombia. Yeah, mega biodiversity. Uh, there are many uh, food resources. Yeah, high potential as Food resources, but as we now uh, see that utilization of the uh, pop, uh, of the potential of biodiversity is still limited. Yeah, yeah, it is a challenge to uh, explore, yeah, to exploit, yeah, to be food resources. Yeah, in this context, uh, we know uh, about uh, local food. Yeah, local food again. Indonesia also rich our potential in production of local food. Yeah. Local food, many underutilized uh, local food that's been uh, 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 utilized, but uh, still not optimally. Yeah. yeah. So actually, local food can be uh, used as uh, to provide uh, food security in Indonesia and domestic consumption, Indonesian population. But also, if we add value, add it, uh, increase the ability, we can export. Yeah, export because potential. Yeah, local food, many many things. Yeah, many many food resources. Yeah, if, if export, we remember that there are six food trends uh, in 2018 uh, uh, according to a global whole food market. Yeah, six food trends. The first is wellness tonic. Yeah, wellness tonic mean uh, like uh, jamu. Yeah, wellness tonic uh, drink. Yeah, wellness to drink. Yeah. Jamu, we have jamu. For creative condiments, yeah. Condiment is uh, for example, sambal, uh, traditional sambal and so on. It is a very uh, trend in the global market. Global market. Purple power. It means that uh, we have a corn, a purple corn, a cauliflower, uh, a sweet potato, a purple sweet potato, and so on. It is now trend in the market. Textari flexitarian means that the people in the world now tend to consume vegetable sources of food yeah we have uh, many sources gluten free pasta yeah like uh, noodle also that free from gluten yeah the trend in the world is uh, free gluten free yeah not uh, not with is it gluten free as a uh, 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 wheat yeah with coconut everything coconut free, yeah in the global market there is a trend to consume to uh, to purchase coconut product. It is a, we have a potential to to share uh, our product in the global market. Yeah. Now, how to anticipate? How to anticipate the uh, agricultural product here in Indonesia to be uh, used as uh, to strengthen the food security and or to increase value value added product for business orientation so by innovation yeah, innovation is an uh, idea new idea creative thoughts new imagination in the form of device or methods yeah 
or introduction something new from Webster Web Journal. Uh, innovation introduction to, of something new, yeah. In uh, the business perspective, innovation is adding an extra step or steps or anything in the product development commercially to satisfy consumer needs that is nothing before, so that you can improve the added value and in turn to increase uh, can increase uh, the competitiveness of the product. Yeah. Innovation and invention, some, sometimes we are confusing with these two uh, words. Invention is a new creation of idea, concept, equipment, method, or process. Innovation, however, application of new concept into a commercial success. Yeah. Innovation also means an introduction of change through something new, something new. So innovation must be invention plus exploitation. Without exploitation, just on invention, it is a, a, a little meaning, yeah. So if we have patent book, means that it is a, just a collection of invention must be commercially uh, exploited, yeah. It is in innovation, yeah. Innovation can be innovation technological or other uh, non tech innovation. I think you know we know all, yeah. Innovation, uh, technological innovation is uh, focused on the technological aspect more than the full business strategy. The result of uh, technological innovation is a new product or increased added value of product, a good product, yeah. Or and then the, in turn, uh, the increase of competitiveness in the, on the market, yeah. Yeah, example of technology, simply like this, yeah. Technology simply uh, and the fruit uh, handling or processing, fruit waxing, waxing or coating. This is a simple uh, technology. Canning or preservation, high temperature, short time, intermittent, pre drying. It is more advanced. Uh, non thermal processing, high pep, high pep processing, ultrafiltration, high pressure processing, and so on. And advancement and packaging technology. So, it's a digital uh, technology. But in the sample of innovation in uh, technology, like fruit juice, we have uh, uh, technology in uh, making fruit juice, yeah? In cacao, it's very common, we know very. But if we making we are making fruit juice, and then we add carbon dioxide gas, it has become carbonated fruit juice. Yeah, fruit juice is okay, technologically is okay, but we add CO2 gas, CO2 gas is a benefit because the, it's more tasty and flavor, the product more tasty, yeah, flavor, and then uh, longer shelf life, longer shelf life, so it's a uh, added value here, the, the uh, value may be, uh, the price may be higher. Kudak, as usual, Kudak is traditional uh, market, no, not can, but if we produce canned good, that's innovation. Instant tool, it is technologically, but halal ice cream, you know, ice cream technologically is okay, but uh, gelatin, uh, use, usually, yeah, commonly use in this ice cream making, gelatin come from swine bone or non halal, but if gelatin uh, is replaced by halal gelatin, so this ice cream is to become halal ice cream or halal marshmallow. Or halal. This is uh, uh, added value, not technologically, without technological. Like that was simple, yeah? And this is just, uh, I, we have a uh, research about ice cream from buffalo hide gelatin <laughs> and juga marshmallow from uh, hide, uh, buffalo hide gelatin. Oh, sorry, the... Excuse me, Professor? Yeah. Five minutes. Time. Left. Yeah. You the still time. Have five Sorry. minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. okay. Five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Bagus. Okay. Five minutes. So, so again, innovation, innovation in food security. There are three uh, component of food security: production, distribution, and consumption or utilization. So, innovation in every uh, in each uh, component or uh, pillars can be like this. Yeah, production aspect, agricultural innovation, 
ya, like to learn agriculture, urban farming, ya, urban farming, GMO, high crop, and new and unconventional food sources, ya, and advanced, advanced by technology. Uh, in distribution and marketing, supply food chain technology, ya, enhance marketing and distribution channels to optimize the food industry worldwide, ya. Technology to simplify food delivery mechanism and system. No, it is uh, the innovation, innovation in the distribution marketing. I think Dr. Adi and Kalsia is uh, in this uh, expertise. Uh, in the nutrition and consumption aspect, the innovation processing technology, fortification, uh, producing post harvest loss, food waste, for, and so on. It is to, I think this is it. Yeah, just, just in uh, innovation and in innovative technology and food packaging, yeah, many, many advancement, yeah. Active packaging example, oxygen, CO2 scavenger, ethylene scavenger, and so on. Yeah, this is price check indicator. Price sense uh, uh, indicator uh, packaging. Yeah, I mean that if our local product is handled and processed and packaged by the new uh, innovative technology is uh, make a make a higher added value. Also, it one by technology, yeah. The culture meat, the culture meat, yeah. It is a food sources insect cricket because become food now, yeah. This new product from this uh, insect, yeah, it's an insect, yeah. Also, uh, this a. Uh, uh, Three food printing IoT based, uh, for example, making pizza by uh, three dimensions food printing. This is now the innovative technology. So, point remarks, yeah, it is the last uh, slide. So, <laughs> the remark, the point is there are heavy changes in global food security and the potential of diversity, biodiversity in Indonesia is huge, but its situation is. Uh, limited as food resources. Uh, so the potential of local food is not yet yet is not yet used optimally and of course it is obvious that agricultural product innovation is important to enhance food security and to increase added value of local local food or local food. I think this, uh, my presentation is just uh, sharing uh, that uh, opinion. Thank you, Dr. Bagus. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor Omar Santoso. I think uh, that's very interesting presentation. Uh, how the challenge and how big is the technology should we support the food needed by people? Okay. Now uh, we going to. Second session. Okay, I got from the donation from the committee that we have to move to the ses uh, session two. Okay, and uh, there is information for the uh, participant that uh, everybody who wants to give name in the list of atten attendees. So please get the link. I hope that the link already provide in the link of this seminar so you can put down the name in this list and the link the committee provide uh, the presency or list of attendees uh, in the link okay thank you and for second session ladies and gentlemen now we're going to second session now i would like to invite professor siri chai Professor Sirice already here. I hope that Professor Sirice already uh, with the presentation. Okay. Professor Sirice is the professor of the Department of Food Science and Technology. He is from Kasasad University, Thailand. And uh, yeah, I would like to read the CP, his CP first. This is a soft CP also for Professor Sirice. Uh, Professor Sri Chai uh, got bachelor's degree from Chua Longkong University, Thailand, 
and uh, get master degree from uh, the University of New South Wales, Australia, and get a PhD graduate from Purdue University, United States. Okay, now he is a lecturer, associate professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology, Kassessa University, and a researcher also in the Department of Agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture, Thailand. And some award and honors also about him. This is uh, for distinguished person of Kassessa University in research and extension service and also some award and honors. This is fourth place of Thailand Innovation Award on science and technology, and also bronze prize and special award for efficiency improvement of osmotic dehydration by ultrasound and drying by microwave in a commercial scale. So Professor CK would uh, he has a presentation about microwave. Okay, Professor Sivichai, you have 20 minutes for presentation. Uh, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. And uh, uh, in Thailand, now we don't have the problem with COVID, but uh, the, the food industry still produce a lot of food for to feed the world. And uh, I would like to uh, introduce my uh, microwave technology for creating food innovation. So let me share the PowerPoint first. My topic is microwave technology for food innovation that um, I will concentrate on equipment and process and a lot of food innovation that I uh, developed uh, will be shown here. And uh, I have been working on microwave food processing for more than 12 years. So I have a lot of PowerPoint presentation. So the first, what is microwave? Microwave is electromagnetic wave, which has a frequency of uh, 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. But normally uh, for food, uh, home, domestic, oven, uh, they use 2450 megahertz and for the industrial microwave oven they use 915 megahertz so why microwave because microwave can heat the food very fast and it save time energy and cost so you can uh, have a better quality or uh, you can increase the productivity uh, at the same time right and then this is the most important thing that I develop a lot of food innovations from microwave technology that you will see. And microwave is considered as clean energy. So there are so many interesting uh, knowledge that I learned from doing. Who use microwave heating? You will see that the developed countries use a lot already, but the developing countries still use very little and they don't know very well, that's why they don't use a lot. So I would like to present the opportunity of microwave technology for microwave sterilization and pasteurization of ready to eat food in closed container and in tube microwave pasteurization, instant food by microwave drying, non fry food, and puffed product by microwave, and bakery product by microwave and infrared together. And 
stabilization of rice brain accelerated aging of rice and then finally microwave thawing of frozen foods first i will start with microwave sterilization and pasteurization the problem in terms of processing is long time processing and severe loss of nutrition severe loss of color texture and flavor in food but if you use microwave heating you will have a rapid thermal processing and you can preserve the color texture flavor and nutrition better than the conventional process so let's start with the conventional process heating uh, they use convection and conduction right because steam will give the heat to the can by convection and then conduction in the solid food or convection in the liquid food it takes time so long time for heating to the center or the cold spot of the can but microwave mechanism is ionic polarization and dipole rotation which relate to water and ion in food they uh, move forward and backward according to alternating electric field and then uh, it generate heat and the heat go up very fast the important part of microwave is magnetron magnetron generate the microwave but you need to have a transformer and the capacitor also now i would like to introduce you the industrial microwave oven which operate continuously uh, the first one we have magnetron uh, here two magnetron each magnetron is 1000 watt and the magnetron generate the microwave downward uh, and this is the cavity this is the choke to prevent microwave leakage and this is a teflon belt to bring your food in the cavity and heat in this cavity and then go out so the belt is controlled by the high speed uh, the variable speed motor uh, so the fastest moving you will have the less time for heating but if you have slower heat uh, slow moving you will have longer time heating and this is a second machine microwave together with infrared oven this is the magnetron that generates the microwave energy down to the foot and here this is the infrared on both sides uh, so you can run it together or run with microwave alone or infrared alone and this is the choke to prevent microwave leakage uh, and this is the teflon belt to bring the food in the oven and then bring it out this is a pilot scale microwave first and infrared later so we bring the food in here this is the teflon belt that bring the food in and the magnetron is on here now there are two magnetron in one module and we have four module so we have eight magnetrons and each magnetron is 800 watt and we have infrared on the top and bottom here now to make the food product brown now microwave heat inside out but infrared heat outside in so you can heat uh, at two mechanisms and if you don't turn on infrared it can be the holding section this is microwave vacuum oven that we have there are six magnetron uh, over the oven 
and there are revolving tray and you can put your food product on the tray and there is a vacuum pump and condenser uh, near the oven uh, so you can control i will discuss later and this is another microwave vacuum oven with rotating basket so we have a rotating basket that contain food that you want to dry and uh, magnetron is uh, around the basket now, and this is the tube that you bring the moist air now, to the condenser and vacuum pump and this is microwave fluid ice bed dryer. You can dry the grain by using micro microwave heating and using fluid ice bed dryer. Uh, there are 20 magnetrons that you can choose which magnetron will operate. And they operate in very short time. So you can save more energy. Now, I would like to discuss, compare, retort, and microwave retort uh, steam retort is very old 200 years ago already right that we still use today but we know that the quality is not so good but now uh, professor chu ming tang developed the microwave retort that can revolutionize the steam retort with high quality high nutrition I would like to show the temperature at the cold spot in microwave heating. You will see that the temperature from room temperature to 121 degrees Celsius is in very short time, like five minutes, and hold at 121 degrees Celsius for five minutes, which you can reach F0 of six minute but in the traditional heating you see at the cold spot the temperature increase slowly and it takes time like one hour to reach 120 degrees celsius and you will get the f0 of six minutes the same but it takes so long time for heating and cooling also so I would like to show you my research on cooked rice in can. You will see at the surface of the can, nah, you will get the yellow witch color. But if you sterilize your food by microwave, you will see all white color because it takes shorter time, really, really shorter time. And Professor Chu Ming Tang from Washington State University, he developed the microwave assisted thermal sterilization or mass process for sterilization. And it's now commercialization and accepted by US FDA already. He has four sections preheating section, heating section by microwave, 915 megahertz because it has more uniform heating holding in the hot water at 121 degrees celsius and then cooling at 20 degrees celsius it takes about 20 minutes for preheating five minutes for heating five minutes for holding and five minutes for cooling and you get f0 about six already that is safe for sterilization and this is the magnetron from 15 megahertz that he used for heating section. Now I would like to present my work on pasteurization of in package cooked rice in cup. Now we have done in tray and in pouch also. But we would like to compare by using industrial microwave heating and this is holding section compare with the steaming retort uh, by using uh, this condition. And I would like to show you that microwave heating, you see, rapid heating, 
rapid holding and rapid cooling but conventional heating you see so long time heating so long time holding and so long time cooling so i would like to compare conventional steam heating and microwave condition one that heat 48 second holding 48 second and cooling 120 second which has similar pasteurizing value uh, in conventional heating process the shelf life is less than seven days but in microwave pasteurization heating uh, the shelf life is less than 30 days so uh, you can see that microwave heating can heat very fast and can prolong the shelf life longer than the conventional steam heating. For uh, pasteurization of pineapple in syrup, now in Thailand, the industry faced a leak cyclobacillus outbreak. So they came to see me to ask whether I can uh, eradicate this problem. So I would like to use microwave pasteurization to kill the alicyclobacillus spore. So I need the F95 of 100 minutes. And this is my condition. You see, we use different speed of the belt and higher speed mean uh, shorter time, but lower speed mean longer time. You will see that when you use uh, coconut milk, you need longer time for pasteurization. And we find the good uh, condition for pineapple in syrup that has a F95 higher than 100 minutes. So we can find uh, many conditions and it can kill the alicyclobacillus spore with good quality. So this is one solution that you can try. And for pasteurization of chili paste, uh, my student uh, use a three row of the chili paste pass through the microwave heating section and then holding section and the cooling in the ice water system. So you can see that in microwave heating, it takes about three minutes and hold for three minutes and cool for 10 minutes. You can reach uh, very good quality. Compare with traditional boiling process, heating 10 minutes, holding 10 minutes and cooling 10 minutes. You see, you can save time a lot and you can increase the productivity. So F value is almost the same but the quality of the microwave heating process is much better than boiling process. Uh, and in tube, microwave pasteurize and sterilization process is done a lot in the US. Industrial microwave system produce the in tube microwave pasteurization and sterilization. This one is in Purdue University. And this one microthermic also develop a small scale batch scale for running in the university or uh, running in the lab system. So we first try the feasibility study. We use a Teflon tube put in the oven here. Then we use the pump to transport the milk through the microwave heating. We want to heat it to 80 degrees Celsius and then put in the uh, bottle and cooling with ice or uh, orange juice, we uh, bring the orange juice here and then pump and heat here to get 90 degrees Celsius and then put in the uh, bottle and cooling with ice. So we can uh, preserve the quality of orange juice uh, without uh, bitter flavor or uh, other flavor loss. Now, I would like to talk about the instant food by microwave drying. We 
dry the food, but we can make it instant. First, instant kanom chi noodle is like laksa in Indonesia. Now, and we can make instant laksa. You see, this is the dry noodle, and we have the sauce powder, and then you put the powder here and add hot water and close the lid for three minutes. You will get the instant laksa noodle. And this instant rice noodle is a traditional Thai noodle. Uh, you can make pad Thai noodle also. Yeah. So you, you just heat uh, by heat, uh, hot water or uh, boiling water for three minutes. And then you take out the water and you put the sauce and stir. And then you can eat quickly. So it's so convenient that we develop by microwave technology microwave drying and this one instant germinated brown rice or gaba rice we can rehydrate it in nine minutes with boiling water which is very very fast but for instant white rice we can rehydrate in three minutes with boiling water we use microwave drying technology this one is normal rice this one is instant rice this one is instant rice rehydrate by tap water and boiling water uh, for boiling water three minutes only and this is instant kernel moon this is sticky rice with coconut milk and sugar and salt so we can add hot water for three minutes, it will become a uh, fresh kernel moon. Nah? It's similar to the, the fresh one. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, in making instant ramen, right? You need to fry in the oil at higher temperature, about 180 degrees Celsius for three minutes and then cooling down. But we use microwave drying instead of frying. So we don't use any oil at all. So we can rehydrate in three minutes in uh, hot water at 90 degrees Celsius. And we don't have uh, the oil content in the ramen at all. So you can store your ramen for one year, uh, still not rancid. And we can, uh, it's good, right? Healthy food, better than frying. This is, uh, we run in a pilot scale for uh, <clears throat> higher production with the company. <clears throat> this one, it's most challenging when my student not only make the ramen, she add uh, chicken meat, egg yolk, and seaweed for achieving high protein, high fat, and high uh, fiber. And we don't use any frying process at all. We bake by microwave. We can have one year storage shelf life and the product can rehydrate in three minutes and it is uh, environmental friendly and cut cost the oil so you can reduce the cost of 50 percent nah? and this is her undergrad work just work in a small machine and then she work in a, a pilot machine and this is her product that can rehydrate in three minutes very fast and this is another uh, good project. We use uh, microwave, os uh, we use ultrasound to assist osmotic dehydration and microwave to assist the drying process. So we can reduce the time a lot. So we don't need to use preservative at all. And the puff product like paddy, we can puff it a brown rice or white rice by using microwave. You can use home microwave or 
continuous microwave oven and this is the product that we try and this is interesting uh, when you make a cluster of rice cook rice you can make a uh, puffing by microwave also now we we can make uh, we call it cow tan. So we use a white rice or purple rice or brown rice. We can make it. So it's like a snack. And we can make a rice crisp. This is uh, from sticky rice flour. Uh, so we can puff it by microwave and it's very crunchy, uh, tasty. And this is pork rind. Normally we put uh, in the frying process, right, to puff the pork skin. But we now no need to use oil. We puffed by microwave. You can try by home microwave or industrial microwave. We try already. And this is a uh, industrial microwave. We use microwave together with infrared to puff the pork rind very easily in very short time about one minute something and this is puffing of shrimp cracker by continuous microwave oven it can puff easily and this we puff the cracker and fish cracker Sorry yeah this one we puff oh. yeah yeah, yeah. we'll finish left. very soon okay yeah so microwave vacuum drying we use vacuum to make a crispy egg pumpkin slice, dragon fruit slice, carrot slice, potato slice, you see, is uh, similar to the frying process, but we don't use any oil at all. And even instant drink powder with fiber, still okay, and it can rehydrate in boiling water. Now, so this technology uh, is cheaper than freeze drying process, and it takes less time so it is uh, cheaper now that small and medium enterprise can afford and we we can bake many uh, baking uh, product now by using microwave and infrared together and we can reduce the time a lot and reduce energy a lot so this is to save cost also for cookie pizza brownie croissant it takes about three to five minutes to bake why when you bake in the uh, conventional oven it takes about 20 minutes so i would like to discuss more on heating of rice bran we need to adjust the dielectric property of rice bran and heat by microwave to kill the enzyme uh, uh, lipase and lipoxygenase enzyme so we can control it and keep for long time uh, for the rice bran oil industry and another one is when we dry the rice paddy, we can accelerate aging of rice uh, to two to three months. So you don't need to store for so long time. Uh, normally you have to store for six months before selling the rice. But here you can have uh, about three months storage and then sell. The last one is microwave thawing. We compare uh, Thawing in the refrigerator, it takes about 150 minutes to thaw. But when you use home microwave, you use only 150 seconds only. But when you use uh, industrial microwave thawing, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes. Nah. So the quality is good. Uh, the drip loss is very little. Nah. And the last one, you need to know the dietary property of your food and you need to measure dietary property and adjust dietary property so that you can have uniform heating. And the last uh, remark is uh, we need good engineering design machine and use Magnetron 915 megahertz for more uniform heating. And for the process, you have to use wisely. 
and you have to determine the optimum condition. And in Thailand, we have very few uh, engineers who know about microwave oven very well and can design the good microwave oven. And one company in Thailand that use uh, industrial microwave system for pasteurization and sterilization of ready to eat food already. But Thai FDA still know very little. And some consumers still have wrong perception on microwave heating. So now we need to have a, a boost system to uh, let the food industry adopt this technology for production in the future. And I would like to thank the Department of Food Science and the committee here to uh, accept me to present. And yeah, this is now for question. And thank you so much. That's okay, all. Thank you, thank you Professor Sirichai, Kapoor Makap. Uh, Professor Sirichai already presenting about uh, micro instant drying and microwave technology. Thank you very much, Professor Sirichai. And now uh, we move to the next speaker, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to invite Professor Seiju Tojo. He from Institute of Agriculture, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Japan. Okay. Uh, before the presentation started, I would like to read his CV. Uh, Professor Seisu Tojo is from Institute of Agriculture, Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Japan. He is based BSc or his bachelor degree and master degree got from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology, Department of Agriculture Engineering, and he's another master he got from Wageningen Agricultural University, the Netherlands, and his doctoral degree graduate from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. And now he, uh, his research interest in the integrated utilization system of crop residue, and then bio heightened fermentation technologies and system. And uh, some paper, also, scientific paper in scientific journal like biohydrogen product development and recycle based organic agriculture. Okay, this is he and uh, Professor Tujo. Uh, you can start the presentation. Time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bagas. It's a very kind introduction. I'm very glad to be invited here as a speaker. May I share my PowerPoint? My topic is a uh, whole crop use in a uh, new normal to save energy and natural resources. Today, I want to show you some uh, our idea to save energy and uh, natural resources. I would like to start with this slide. In the pandemic, of COVID-19 situation, all trade and uh, logistics are restricted and the consumer price index, especially food, increase quickly in the pandemic situation. So in the state of uh, emergency, uh, we should stay at home and we buy food 
in the shop and take out with this kind of uh, disposable plastics to home. And after eating, we saw many uh, plastic uh, waste. In Japan, the plastic bag is not free from July 1st this year. So government tried to reduce the amount of plastic waste, but it's not so. Let me slide the next perspective of our energy demand and supply. Next 20 years, energy demand increase, especially in countries and regions such as China, India, Southeast Asia, Middle East, and Africa. Energy demand is expected to increase along with economic growth. Comparing the uh, energy demand of 2010 and 2040, biomass and renewable energy increase every country. However, the structure depend, depending on the uh, oil remains unchanged in Asia. In Japan, we had energy crisis in 1970s, two times. After that, our government changed the policy to increase nuclear power and renewable energy. And then nuclear power increased very much, but unfortunately we had bad accident 2011 by Ascake Tsunami. Our energy self-sufficiency ratio is very low at around 8% still now. And how about food? Our government said, and show this uh, picture slide. In the Mid Middle East and uh, Asia and Africa, the imports increase next 30 years very much. In that situation, we have many problems on agriculture in Japan. The farmland is decreasing and the self-sufficiency rate of food is very low, remains around at 40%. And more severe in feed grains the rate is around 28%. So that's why we should, increase, should import a lot of grains from overseas countries like this. Today's topic is uh, whole crop use. Why focus on the whole crop use because energy and fertilizer and other input are used to grow whole crops, not only edible part, but non-edible part, that means crop residue. Crop residues are expected as a raw material of biofuel because edible part of crop may not be used to produce biofuel anymore in view of world 
food situation. Also, crop residues are expected to support growth of new industries. Crop residue will function as a new industrial raw material. And also we should pay attention that crop residues contain a lot of plant nutrient. So that uh, recycling system for crop residue and plant nutrient should be established. This is a scene to harvest rice in autumn in Japan. You can see the combine harvest in the paddy field. Look at the tail of combine harvester. Rice straws are threshed down to soil after grain threshing from rice year. This is the current material of agriculture product in Japan. Maybe the situation is the same in the world. Here is crop and only top edible part is collected and processed and distributed to people as a food. So we are suggesting future material, material flow. We are focusing on the crop residue. Non-edible parts should be collected and transported to the primary processing facilities to produce refinery materials such as medicine, supplement, liquid fuel, or feed, fertilizer, and so on. And also we are suggesting to make recycling system for after primary processing facilities. Here are many residues that should be returned to the field. So this is the scheme of processing whole crop or crop residue transported from farm to primary processing facilities and only available parts, oil or cellulose are transported to refinery processing facilities. And then we can produce bioplastics or biofuel. And we have a lot of residue from primary processing facilities that should be transported to the uh, secondary processing facilities to make compost, fertilizer, or stimulant. And finally, that should be in farmland again. I would like to show you one of our research project. It's called Green Biomass Project. The aim of project is make system design for using biomass, especially rice straw through bioethanol production and dairy farm. We have already linkage between rice farm and dairy farm. Because our government 
try to increase self-sufficiency of rough feed for dairy cow and to increase supply good manure compost to paddy field and totally we can produce safe and organic food from rice farm and also dairy farm. So our suggest is to make bioethanol production between rice farm and dairy farm. So we call it RED linkage model. So rice farmer can produce such forage rice to feed dairy cow. This is the material flow of GHG reduction in RED linkage model. This is the uh, farmland and the farmer produce forage rice. And in that time, they emit GHG as AC2 and the forage rice is transported to bioethanol production manufacturer. In the way there is emission of TC1 and also we have emission from bioethanol production as EC. However, we have bioethanol production and this bioethanol is an alternative of gasoline. So that's why we think the bioethanol emission is minus, it's a reduction. So it's as uh, PCE. And also we have fermentation residue that residue can be alternative of cow feed and it, its emission is a minus reduction, is minus PCR. Also we have uh, emission from dairy farm because they produce milk and meat that is TC. However, we have, they have manure and that manure is alternative of chemical fertilizer in paddy field. So emission is minus, it's a reduction of PCM. Here is data. The Professor Okawa developed very good forage rice named Leafstar. Rice production is not so much, only 4.3 ton per hectare, but the store production is 14.8 ton per hectare. Especially the store contains starch about 30% and sorry, sugar 16. And Professor Ishizaki produced bioethanol with two scenarios, A1 and A2. In the A1 scenario, he produced 
bioethanol with simultaneous sacrification and fermentation, SSF. He used 1,000 kilogram rice straw and produce bioethanol 242 and also residue 548 kilogram. In the scenario A2, he used sodium hydrate 1% and uh, at uh, 100 degrees Celsius for two hours to degrade the uh, rice straw. He produced ethanol 309 liter and residue 167. Uh, this is the uh, facilities uh, device to produce bioethanol. The bioreactor is not so big, only 30 liter and batch system. Here is a, a data of uh, component of rice and uh, residue from the uh, scenario A1 and uh, A2. We use index TDN, total digestive nutrient for dairy cow. Professor, Professor Tojo, we still have two minutes left. Okay, thank you. Thank you. TDN of residue scenario A1 is 68.9 and 70.2 from the residue scenario A2. These values are nearly the same as the value of low straw. That means we can use such residues for the feed of dairy cow. So this is the balance sheet of GHG emission and reduction in the uh, RED linkage model. The material flow, a thousand kilogram rice straw, produce ethanol 242 and residue 548. And uh, they can produce milk 773 and compost 175. In that case, GHG emission of rice production 276, ethanol production 171, dairy production 140, and transmission emission 1.4, the total is 690. However, we can reduce the GHG with bioethanol 419 feed 293, compost 4.3, totally 716. So we can reduce GHG more than emission. And uh, in the scenario A2, the reduction is more than the scenario A1. So this is the final slide. I would like to conclude like this. Well, we sh suggest whole crop use to save energy and uh, natural resources and the importance of recycling system for plant nutrient. And further technical system in agro-industry collaborated with refining industry should be established to utilize 
four crops. And total assessing method such as LCA is very powerful. However, I think a new methodical assessing way may be expected to promote new normal after COVID-19 pandemic. That's all my presentation. Okay, thank, Th thank you. you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sisutoyo. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting presentation. Okay, and uh, now we come to the session for questions. So here I have two questions already give me to note it. And uh, okay. I would like to read the first question. This is from Anja from UKM. Okay, uh, the question is for Professor Sirichai. Uh, this is the question is, uh, is there any commercial microwave? Is there any commercial microwave machine that we can use to set the certain microwave power during research? So. I can repeat the question. Is there any commercial microwave machine that we can use to set a certain microwave power during research? That's a question for Professor Sirichai. Can you get the point of question, sir? Excuse me, Professor Sirichai, can you hear me? I, I cannot catch the, the, the question very well. Okay. okay. I, I, I will repeat this. Is there any commercial microwave machine that we can use to set the certain microwave? Certain microwave power during research? Yes, in Thailand, there are many types of microwave oven that is sold in Thailand. And yeah, there are many control system that uh, you, you can, uh, I think, search from the internet and look for the, the specification that you want and you can discuss with them. And then uh, I think you will get the, the, the good one that, that you want. Okay, okay. Okay, that's the answer. Okay, I'll give the, to Anja. To Anja, I give the opportunity to give question directly. So please, the committee, please unmute for to Anja, please. To Anja, you can hear me. Hello, to Anja, you still here? Okay, I think uh, that's a problem. Okay, okay, thank you, Professor Sirichai. Uh, now we move to the next uh, question. This is from Nur Hayati. Okay, Nur Hayati, do you hear me? If you don't mind, you can uh, tell the question directly. Nur Hayati, can you hear me? Nur Hayati? Yeah, okay, okay. Please tell your question to, to who the question will be addressed. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, my question, uh, it is an, a nice presentation from Mr. Uh, Prof. Toju. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, we, have, we have a research about bioethanol. We use uh, the molasses, this is a uh, uh, liquid was from the sugarcane uh, process and I think that uh, using uh, molasses is uh, very effective to produce the bioethanol. When we use the cellulose like uh, from rice, this is we must uh, hydrolyze the from rice uh, using the acid and this is not uh, eco-friendly process. So uh, maybe you have advice 
to effective uh, the process uh, when we hydrolyze uh, uh, or uh, lignin ligno uh, what, what is uh, the the lignification process when we what we conduct to the lignin the lignification process, we use uh, uh, the alkali solution. What then we must conduct uh, the hydrolyzed uh, cellulose to convert the uh, glucose. So we we can convert the glucose make a bioethanol. Maybe you have the advice to more effective because it's not effective. Uh, thank you and for. Prof. Sirisa, thank you for your answer. And uh, uh, we have the the rest, the crispy rice product. Maybe mm. anytime we we uh, we would like to uh, collaborate research with you, Professor Sirisa. Thank you very yeah, much. You can read my paper and try home microwave oven. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you, Bunar Hayati. Okay, so the question to who you will be addressed? Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for your question. It's a nice question. And uh, always we have such a problem. And you told uh, acid and alkali is uh, not uh, uh, environment friendly uh, material. So. That's right. So that's why we uh, try to change the uh, system to hydrate the uh, um, the uh, biomass and uh, hydrolysis. I mean, uh, the uh, for instance, uh, hot compressed water treatment is a very good uh, system to degrade the biomass, especially uh, uh, semi uh, um, um, lignocellulose uh, biomass. Uh, of course, uh, to make bioethanol, moras is better than the uh, cellulose, but we cannot uh, use moras not so much because of the uh, a shortage of uh, our food. So that's why we should uh, move to the uh, another next uh, generation of uh, uh, making bioethanol. In that case, hot compressed water treatment is uh, very good. It is uh, high pressure inside and also high temperature. But the water is still water in that situation. So it's a liquid situation. And it has uh, ion product very high, more than thousand times of normal water. So it means it is very uh, easy to degrade biomass, especially uh, lignocellulose biomass. So uh, Hoiron <laughs> is trying to use such uh, devices to produce bio uh, hydrogen. So maybe you can ask him. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, question. That's my answer. Is OK? Okay, okay. Thank you, Professor Tojo. I think that's a clear answer for this question. Okay, we continue to the next question. We have still one question for Professor Tojo. Uh, I would like to read this uh, question. Uh, as we know that Indonesia is an agricultural country. Therefore, a lot of agricultural biomass waste is produced. So what is the way to determine whether the waste is appropriate for use as liquid, solid, or gas fuel? That's the question. Can you get the point, Professor Tojo? Okay, thank you, 
Okay, for <laughs> questions, it's rather difficult to answer. Maybe it depends on the situation. I think the in Japan, the, we need liquid fuel. So that's why we try to make a bioethanol. Uh, maybe the situation is the same in Indonesia. So uh, biomass uh, can be converted to uh, gas or liquid and also solid. To make uh, a solid by uh, carbonized is also the good uh, technology to keep uh, carbon inside and uh, make it fire uh, later or uh, mm, or yeah, just keep uh, carbon dioxide inside uh, of earth. So uh, I think my answer is uh, it depends on the situation of uh, uh, biomass wasted in the uh, yeah, uh, field and uh, forestry. Is Okay. Okay. Good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for the answer, Professor Tujio. That's a clear answer. Okay. I hope that the questioner also understand what the answer. Okay, we move to the next uh, question. We have uh, one more question here. This is from Laitatul Rizkia. Okay, by Laitatul Rizkia, are you here? Can you hear me? Okay, we have yes. one question. Okay, okay. But later, if you want to give the question directly, I give you one opportunity to give a question, please. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so the question is for Professor Siri Chai. I just want to know uh, how the effectivity of energy consumption of microwave oven, if we compare with maybe conventional oven, or electrical oven. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, Professor Siri Chai, you get the point for this question, you can answer directly. Thank you. Yes, uh, I would like to compare when you bake your food with microwave and with uh, uh, heater. Uh, uh, when you use heater, you need to warm up you are oven first, right? To reach the temperature you want. And then you put the sample in and then you heat your sample until it's uh, cooked. Uh, for baking of bread, you have to warm your oven uh, to reach about 160 to 180 degrees Celsius. It takes about five to 10 minutes. And when you heat uh, your bread, it takes about 20 minutes. So you need to uh, calculate the electric cost on both sides, right? Warm up and heating. But for microwave, you just use a uh, uh, magnetron of 800 watt and you can heat it very fast, suppose in five minutes. So you can calculate the electricity that you, you use and you can also can calculate the efficiency of heating now from the uh, magnetron efficiency and the, the, the heat that you need uh, and the heat that you keep. So you can calculate the uh, efficiency. Normally, the efficiency of microwave heating is about 60 to 70%. But for traditional heating, it's about 30 to 40% only. So microwave efficiency uh, is double of traditional heating process. Okay. Okay, thank you for the answer, uh, Professor Siri Chai. Okay, Dula uh, Gatul, do you get the point of the answer? This is enough for you. Okay, I think that's uh, 
that's enough for the answer. Thank you, Professor Sirichai. Okay, we still have uh, one minute time. Is there anybody want to give some question? Only one question, please. Okay, if uh, no question, uh, I think this session is enough. So we. May I uh, ask a question? Okay. To, yes. to Mr. Sirichai. Okay. Uh, I think the microwave technology is very suitable to decrease the post harvest loss product uh, to extend the shelf life. But how we can develop microwave technology to protect agricultural product from the threat of COVID-19? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Buinda. That's a question for Professor Chiritai. Okay, Professor, please answer. Uh, you can use the microwave oven to reheat the food, uh, like uh, street food, to uh, kill the virus. Uh, so you need to heat to higher than 80 degrees Celsius. You can kill all the virus. So I think this is safe for food to eat. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the answer, Professor Sirichai. And ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, this is enough for this session. Thank you very much for the question and thank you for the answer for all speakers in this session. Uh, before we close this session, okay, uh, let's give big applause to all speakers. Okay, thank you for all speakers. And I would like to make a small conclusion for our discussion today. Okay, let me let me read the conclusion. Okay, I have two small conclusion. This is uh, one is in a green desert revolution. Food security is still greatest challenge for our time, and increasing population in more people will create global demand for food. So this will double as quality and safety demand always increase. I think uh, this is uh, related with Professor Umar. And second, uh, the agro-industrial revolution has been happened and always strongly required in this new era, new normal era, sorry. And technology has a strong role in supporting this revolution in agro-industry and technological improvement in agri-industry will be a challenge as a future work for all of us. That's uh, my conclusion for seminar today. And thank you very much uh, for joining us. And I would like to say thank you to all speakers, all audience and participants uh, for your participant in this seminar. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope that uh, the information that we have shared, that we have discussed today, will be useful, give uh, benefit for us, for all of us. And once again, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. That's all. And now I would like to give the time back to Bu Nidia or Bu Winda. Thank you. Thank you, and let's big applause to speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ida Bagus. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end of the event. I ask the presenter, sorry if there is a mistake in bring this event. And let us choose this event with prayer, but the event which we have to solve is beneficial for all of us. I am Nidia Saramardika. Thank you and goodbye. Okay. Thank you for thank you. Speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. See you thank again. You. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor Sri Chai. Thank you, Professor Tojo. Thank you very much. And see you thank for you the for next seminar. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.